Hello and good afternoon everybody. The first thing I'm going to show you is a boundary map. So everything within the white line belongs to the property. It really is quite enormous. And so as we take a look, it's bounded by a wall all the way around, apart from the open land area from the road to the buildings. Here are the maps that I usually show you. So up to Coimbra, it is just over half an hour. Down to Tamar, it's just under half an hour. And Lisbon Airport is about one and a half hours. Now I'm going to show you to the river beach, or the lakes as we call them, which is 14 minutes. I mean, it's kind of like the Ozarks, but without Ruth. So yeah, not worth going. Just joking. They're absolutely fabulous. So yeah, there's no wall over the land area, as I said. That's because the lands are owned by the same person. More land is available, but... Sarah will get into it, all that kind of detail later. And in any case, we don't know the price if you want more land. But I mean, there's tons of land already. Now, the bright white painted buildings that you can see are the ones that are not included in the price. But there's a ton of buildings and outbuildings, some of which you'll want to keep. Again, I'm going to get into only some of that because Sarah is going to go into detail. Suffice it to say... There's lots and lots of property here for your money. If you want to live off the grid, if you want to live self-sufficiently, you can do it right here while inside a village. Now, this was once a working farm. It had a bar, cafe. It had a mini market, possibly selling their own farm produce. They were certainly selling their own wine. I mean, that's an absolute certainty. The Adega, the brewery room was massive. And there was tons of wine left over. I mean... I imagine it's all gone bad now as it has been left. And there were even a couple of crates of bubbly, spumante type stuff. But anyway, so let's come in from the other side. And I did another map for that as well, so you can have a look. Now, I put it in black because it was impossible in white. So you can quite clearly see where everything is. Obviously, if you need to pause the video to get a better look, then you can do that. You get a better view here of all the buildings that are included and as I said, Sarah can get into what she would keep. You probably can't keep all of it, and you probably wouldn't want to keep all of it. But for the money, which you've already seen on the thumbnail and in the title, you will never get better than this. And if you want this kind of thing, if you dream of a manor house farm with a huge walled garden, here it is. So let's go and find Sarah. We are at a brand new property. Actually, I'm at a font of waterfront behind me, but I'll show you the property in a minute. The property is literally a new listing for us. So this is the first time we've been here and I have checked the paperwork and I will discuss that with you afterwards. We wanted to get the font in. We are in the centre of a village and it's a village that's got lovely messages. A fountain of light, love and happiness. You know, it's, it's talking about seeds aren't rubbish. I cut and I look after them. Question marks. You can have results or apologies, but you can't have both. I'm trying to translate on the spot here. Don't pollute. Okay, I've just said I think I'd like my kids to grow up here. So we're in the centre of a village. I might as well just say where it is. We're in Arega because if you turn around, you're going to recognise this building here, which I've always loved. Just, I mean, who doesn't? Look at the character in that. I suspect it's empty, which is a big shame. There's the church, big car park around the back there. It's functioning. A cafe around the corner where I've just snuck off and had a coffee without Paul even noticing that I've been and come. And so now we are looking at, I believe the property that we've got for sale. Now, this is, or it was, there's some lovely little things I found in here. It was a cafe and a shop. It was probably the main cafe and shop of the village. It's been closed for quite some time. This here, I don't know if Paul's not looking. This is actually the front door to the house part because the steps run up from here. 
and lovely bright red carpet. There's also two pieces of street art in this village that I'd like to show you. That at the end of it, if you get a bit of street art, that's why. So, you've got, ignore the door at the end because it's just a strange one. Main house door. This would have been the door into the cafe. The windows, which I've got half open, and then the door we're going to go through. Are we going to walk up here again? Can I just get you to turn around and just see the essence of where we are? What I want you to do is have a look at the street art. they obviously very creative in this. Oh, there's the other piece there. Oh, let's go on a divert. Sorry. Forget about the house. Let's have a look at some pictures. Look, I mean, not everywhere bothers doing this. I think that's the school. Oh, and up there, okay, that's the cemetery. Very pretty entrance to the cemetery. But I love, look at this building here. So you've got a multi-banker, you've got a cash point, you've got a church, you've got a cafe. Look at that, that's the second one. Just look at the detail. And who needs Banksy? <laughs> who, who is Banksy? <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? And usually you only get these in the city. I mean, I took some photographs. This is where we came down. There's another one on the other side. I took, well, I was in Luria the other day and I took some amazing photographs, but we are in a tiny little village. And just look at the artwork on the walls. A celebration of age, longevity and life in general. Right, let's go back to the house. Well, you might as well have a look at the views because one of the things here is all along the ridge up here, there are stunning views. So we be, we're in a, a town that belongs to Figaro de Svignus. I don't think there's any point in trying to hide our location. So, However, if you see the video, if you see the property through us, then please come through us. Um, so the one on the corner with the balcony, this is, this is the house that we are trying to show you. That's the marketplace. That's why we've got fruit and veg on the wall. There is a weekly market. Okay, so we're gonna go in through the cafe. We're gonna walk straight through the cafe and I'm not going to mention anything about it, because I'll do that on the way back. At the end of the day, we've got to come back down the same stairs. So go on then, you go in first. Do you want to get a shot down the lane? Or do you want to save that for later? No, that's fine. See, this is, this is it's a huge walled garden, and all of the wall, as far as you can see, is, it contains the land for this property. It's enormous. So, coming in, you want to go first? And we're going to turn right. As I said, we're just going to ignore this for now. No, we're going to ignore this for now. Come straight through here. Have some, found some quirky little things. And we're going to pretend that we've just come through. The, shall I go up? You go up. We've just come through this door. And you go straight up there. So I don't know if you can get the colour, but that's a lovely ready burgundy. Grandeur. Wide staircase. This would have been a posh manor house. Is that the wrong word? No. Right. We've got wooden floors, We've got wooden ceilings now. Okay, this is a lounge area. On the left. Oh, do you know what? We've been here about two hours. I've just found a room we haven't been in. This is the attic. Have you, you been up there? Been in, yeah. Okay, so this is a new discovery for me. Am I going to show you the attic straight away? Am I doing? Yeah, I guess so. Hang on, shall I just go up? No, I mean, it's, There's nothing really to see. There's nothing to see. Okay, so let's come back out of there. Ah. Oh, but you've got the light on. So this is, I'm going to turn it off now. But you've still got electric connection. From here, there's a room on your left there. If you want to go in and look, it's bedroom. What have we got? It's a small room. 
but it's a small room. And they've got, but clearly it goes through to the next one. Actually, I'm not going to start talking about how you'd knock this through or knock that through because there's a lot to be done. You can see they've made two small bedrooms there. If you just took it out, you'd have one great big lovely lounge here. But it's got one of the most unique designs I've ever seen. This house, with, when it comes to angles. Shall we come into the kitchen? I guess that's the obvious place to come. We've got the fireplace. You've not got the best view. There's nothing I can say about that that's really positive. <laughs> Except maybe that's a building that you'd knock down. <laughs> Coming back through here. We have this hallway, and you can see it's a funny angle. Now here, we have... The old, hmm, I've forgotten a word, like the marble effect on the walls. And it's very nice, and it would be a shame. It's like, I always think it's like Moroccan. If you've been to Morocco and you feel the walls, it's very, very, very soft, smooth. And coming into what I guess must have been, oh my word, it's got air con. I didn't clock that. We've got air con. And we've got, should we get the, we wondered what this was, but it turned out to be a wardrobe. And you have the Juliet balcony in this room. So this was definitely, at the time, the master bedroom. Really thick, deep walls. And fabulous furniture. We've got the, we've got concrete ceilings. It's a real mixture. This is obviously a property it has been added onto over the years. You've got stone walls, but you've got a concrete ceiling. Here again. So this is this is a decent sized room. You've got a double bed in it, a wardrobe, chest, two chest of drawers. Nice. So. Things like the doors, you would probably keep. If falling in love with manor houses is your thing, then you keep the wooden doors, you keep your wooden frames, you'd repaint them and put new handles on, and it would keep the essence. Oh, a nice blue to go with this would be really good. So, another bedroom here. It's a double small by what we'd consider today's doubles. I can hear one of our phones going. Do I ignore it? Or do we wonder whether we need to collect the children? I'll check it out in a minute. Let's finish up here. So, this is where... So, that's going out to the back of the property. And we've come in downstairs over there. And we're going to come in through here, where we've got a strange angular add-on. And the bathroom. Again, when, the, when these houses, most stone houses were built, there were no bathrooms. You go in. So the bathrooms were always an add-on. Oh, look at the tap. Look at the hot water tap up on the left. <laughs> oh, if it did nothing, you'd just have to keep it. Yeah, it's the hot stop tap. Stop top, fabulous. Okay. So, I mean, maybe if you look out, oh, yes, one of these windows, let's see which is the better one. Come, come to this one. And if you get right over in that corner and look that way, you've got an idea of the view and the magnificence of, oh, can you get it or not? Difficult, isn't it? Very weird looking through the camera. You see something completely different to me. The enormous walnut tree out the back. So from here, lights work. We will then 
leave the back of the property or do we go into back into the cafe? Back into the cafe. As I said, we're going to go back through the property. Now I'm immediately confused. Here we are. <laughs> That's more confusing. Oh. Don't worry. Right. And down here. And into the shop. Okay, so there's some, there's some absolute classics in here. Oh, it's very sweet. But most of you are not going to be looking at... Oh, hang on. Can I go behind the counter and play? What was that programme? Last of the Summer Wine? I should be pouring things. I don't go... Uh, what did I find? Oh, you've got to come behind here to see what I found. Realistically, you're not going to want this. So, what you need to look at is that actually you've got a really big open space. Unusual in a stone build. Okay? Plenty of light coming in. You've got more doors than you can shake a stick at. And a big open space. But I found a phone booth. I found various confusing things. Look. I've got a phone box. I don't know if you can see in here, it's got various numbers, but look, it's actually so old, it's got like a, I don't know, you only see these on telly, where you've got, the, you've got the person changing from one line to another, and then it completely confused me, because if you turn around here, you've got what looks like one of the hand things from COVID, and I was like, no way, it can't have been open like three years ago. But it turns out, in the end, I said it for ages, this is September 2005. So they were just being very good and hygienic. So that's your shop. And then you come through here, which is a stone wall that you're coming through, into another stone area, which is the bar. All important. Slightly dodgy wall. Can't, I put the toilet seat down with my foot. Can't help but note that the biggest thing in there is your urinal. Because obviously men are the only ones in the bar. Oh, hang on, we've got prices. A cup of milk was 45 cents. A uh, ham, do you know what? A cheese and ham sandwich was one euro ten. That can't be right. 13 years ago. It must have been a very expensive bar. Right, May 2010. Yeah. 13 years ago. Right, okay. Forget about that. Let's come through. So again, really big open space, which means the downstairs of your property consists of two enormous big spaces plus one little toilet. What you've got is scope to do whatever you want because normally you'd have to knock down lots of walls and tiny little divisions and you don't have to do that here. So do you want to go through there first? This goes through to what is... We're now leaving... I can say we're now leaving the stone building but we've come into another stone building. So it is a complete mixture of build and different ages here. You've got really good height. You've got what look like reasonably good timbers, but they've all got this huge concrete beam across them. I would say that this is solid. This is solid. This would be part of your house because this looks like a really solid part of build. There's stuff outside which I would say whoosh, get rid of. Yeah, you'd keep this, as part, and this would be the end of your house, I think. I can't get this open. And you'd walk up here into the start of the courtyard. If you just turn to your right, Paul, you've got the stairs that go up 
to where I was standing when we heard the phone going and we turned around and went back down the stairs. Also, this part here, just down the stairs, separate building, but this is also stone. And stone means it's been here forever, no problem with licensing, all fine. You've got what must be the septic tank there. You've got the old toilet. And then, oh, what did I find here? No, it wasn't in here. This isn't a concrete floor. There is an attic space. It's not huge. You'd incorporate this into your property, one way or another. The fact that the foss is there means this could actually be an independent. You've got a bathroom. You put a bathroom in, a mezzanine, <coughs> kitchen, lounge, dine, little studio apartment. Quite easy to do. Right, moving on. We have, shall I go in? We have a kitchen. Now, this is an add-on, but a posh add-on. That's possibly the oldest extractor I've ever seen. Watch your head. But quite new cupboards. I mean, not new, new, but relatively new. Oh, I think you've got two bread ovens to look in here because I've looked in one other one and it wasn't this. Hmm. It's a while since someone's grilled anything in there, but it has been used. I'll give it a miss. Yeah, don't bother. It's, got, it's just got a grill thing. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> and then back into the courtyard again, or this covered area, just which is linking house, room I've come out of, other area, and here, this is... This is not a waterproof building. <laughs> this is a little add-on and you probably get rid of it because there are some things about the licensing of this property that I need to explain to you. As we are just putting it on, it's literally not yet on the website. Should we go out into the courtyard and maybe discuss what it is? Right, is that a decent enough thing for me to pop from I can't see. So what we've got is the house itself is registered as 160 square meters. That's two floors, 80 square meter footprint, which we have because it, it, we were a bit disbelieving. We have actually measured it. And the actual stone part is roughly that works, surprisingly. Then we've got an adega which is 45 square metres. Now, I'm not sure if that's the other building we've just been in with the little toilet, that's stone, or if it's this building behind me, which is in stone, but is obviously used, or was obviously used as the Adega. So that means you've got, I can't add up suddenly, you've got 205 square metres here, and then at the very end of the property, there's a stone building which is registered as 50 square metres. There are a lot of other buildings here which are just animal sheds. Now, some of them you could turn into, well, you just repair them and use them as what they were meant to be. Because if you want goats or you want horses, then you're going to want stables. However, this whole area here that Paul is planning and probably this building here and this, you might just get rid of because this could be a really, really nice courtyard. Go and have a, have a look. But I just want people to understand that there would be a licensing process. You'd have to come and look at this property and see for yourself because you wouldn't want to keep all of it. You just wouldn't. Uh, I think, has that got a stone base? No. Afraid not, darling. No? No. What's that then? Oh, God, you might have one rock. Well, a stone base is a stone base. Yeah, but it, uh, it only goes like a metre down into the property. Let's not get really involved in 
things that I think probably need to come down. I mean, again, we discussed, oh, take that down. No, it'd make a great garage. And you get, well, you can't get a car here. It doesn't make a great garage. So this is worth showing you, though, because this is... Oh, this is my other little find. This is, or was, the Adega. And it does have mostly stone walls. And it has a huge tank... And it has, this is my favourite, the biggest rocking bottle of whiskey. I've, well, I mean, I don't know that I've ever seen a rocking bottle of whiskey before. And about 20, 20 year old bottles of fizz that have all gone off. And a TV, so you just sit here and get drunk, basically, and watch a bit of telly. That would have been the point here. Reinforced ceiling, concrete, wooden, the rest of it. So I think this is a keeper. But then probably a lot of the outbuildings back in the courtyard are not. And we will go through the courtyard down to the enormous walnut tree. And hopefully you'll be able to understand. Imagine that's not blocking your view. This isn't blocking your view. You're looking at that part of the house with sort of the grill on it, not necessarily this block in front, but you still have a covered area in here. Can you see me like this bit here? You keep a slightly covered courtyard that comes out into a big courtyard. And if we go back round and we go through the gates, Imagine that this isn't here. And then you've got an enormous walnut tree, an enormous pine tree, natural shade. Just get a look of your views. Can you do your views through there? Just a little glimpse before we go down to the well. I mean, on one hand, it's all set up. There's water, there's irrigation. Obviously, animals were kept in all of these buildings. I mean, these stables here... Oh, I've just done this. I thought the stables here are actually quite good, but then I see a great big crack in the... Oh, hello. Birds... Oh, they had everything here. So, let's imagine that's not there. And that tree is actually just hanging over a lovely seating area. Follow me. So, Paul's going to come, stop, stay where you are. He's going to come through here and he's going to show you the walnuts and this crop. Thinking about the fact that these are not ready for another sort of four or five months. It's amazing how many walnuts there are on here. This building here, I've deemed useful. Paul will be very, very happy. Garage, enormous garage. And you can actually get a vehicle to it which is ultimately very important if you're talking about a garage, otherwise it's pointless. So this is huge and you keep it, I think. Or you turn this into your stables. Ha <laughs> ha Still garageless. And let's do the land. Let's come here and let's save that well for last. Come over here. Well, not last, actually. goes on and on. Here, on the same level as the house, the courtyard, everything, we've got one long flat terrace. And then it goes down here. Now that beautiful house there is on the other side of the road. And of course I can't, I'll come and look where Paul's looking. I can't see what he's looking at. Have you got the ruin in? Yeah. We call it a ruin, but it's not a ruin. The stone building in the corner, that's literally on the corner of the property. And to either side of it, it's walled. As we showed you in the beginning, the only thing is from here, the wall doesn't look quite as... Well, you can't see it. But the whole property is walled. So we're coming back round to the walnut tree. I must remember to come here and collect walnuts, I think. Right time of year. 
Now, I've swapped my sews for nails, haven't I? This is your driveway. This is your old, forget about, well, I'm not even gonna, <laughs> forget about me getting any water up. Um, it's huge. And then it's got details that are lovely. Oh, yeah. So we've got the steps coming up. This was meant to be stood on. And the steps going up to the top of the well, which also serves as sort of a threshing circle, is also probably the reason why this tree is so enormous, is its roots are well and truly dug into a great big water source. But here, so the well, excuse me, this is your washing station. I don't know why I made that noise, that was really stupid, but anyway, let's leave it. Um, and can I don't, can you see the whole point yeah. of the washing thing? Can you see it? Is that this was your scrubbing board. Great fun in the old days. Yeah, this would have been a couple of, uh, a couple of people washing Oh yeah, in one time. and I mean, it was this is like hard work. Three people, isn't it? I mean, yeah. this is the size of it. Yeah, this huge tank. The laundry. Oh my! Look, you've got a space for your soap. Okay, fair play. That's the first. For me, that's the first. That's got to be for your soap. Look. <laughs> I've got to be for the soap. Yeah, I've never seen that before. No, me neither. And I remember. Back in the day when we first arrived here and I used to go and collect all my water for drinking and use these things and it, do you know what in winter and you're there with the other ladies and you are absolutely freezing and your hands are absolutely freezing and it's not much fun. They look very pretty. So if you go back over there and then can get the gates in because I think the gates are also a very nice design. So I shut it. If you go back a bit you can get the full effects of the gate so this would be your driveway and you can actually get your car into the garage now we were going to walk along the road through the gate, yeah come on then okay yeah let's go both ways so So that's the gateway in, and then if you were to go left, have you already done that way? That's going to, you can see the street at the end, and then the property turns right. And that's where the other stone building is that we'll go to in a minute. And then if you, I've just noticed something. I've just noticed the, um, the manhole cover in the road. Now whether that means that you've actually got main sewerage in this street or not now. You no, going? you haven't. It's just it's it's a drainage. Right. It's drainage. Okay, okay. And then if we come back up here, again, this wall is the stone wall, and then you can see the block on top, which is bound to be something I was saying to get rid of. And then all the way up to the top, how well you can see the, the dark brown doors are on the other side of the street all the way up there back up to the main house and then you get a better picture actually of what the main house is because you've got the yellow very pale if you can see it cornerstone not cornerstone the yellow painting on the corner the borders of the house that's the original house and shop exactly you've got the the great grills on the windows and this would have been your street access to walk in, to essentially be in that courtyard area we were talking about. Are you coming around to there? Oh, I'm conscious, doing it again and not looking at the camera, I'm just talking. Right, okay. So, back through the gates and down to the stone, across the land. The land is essentially flat. You've got loads of fruit trees, well-established fruit trees. Um, at the price this property is going out at, the land plot attached to it is registered as 2,700 square metres. 
Yet again, I suspect you have more. It's on a very, very gentle slope downwards. So no problem for I mean, that's, agriculture that's or an animal. Garden wall, isn't it? Yeah, no. Have a, have a wall property like this is just, it is lovely. I was going to say it's everyone's dream, but how do I know? If you were going to build all that, it cost almost as much as the asking price. Yeah, it is amazing. So, a variety of fruit trees. Let's let's just go. And one's here. Right, you're down on the split level. I need to see what Paul's looking at. You look over there. Let's look. Can you focus on the orange tree? What orange tree? That one with the big oranges on. Oh, right. They're probably a bit far away. Right. He's trying to get an idea of where the boundary is. That's approximately on the boundary up. Yeah, the orange tree's in, isn't it? It's in. Yeah. It's in, baby. Right. But it goes a bit further over than that, and yeah. then it comes straight up, in a straight line, back up to the properties. But what you've also got is the, the, the land next to it is owned by the same owner, and she will sell it all. So if you want bigger land, it's, it's possible to do that. There might be another walnut tree there. And I've got to learn my trees. This is ridiculous. So is that. Look, I can see a walnut. Oh, I wish I had a walnut tree. We've got a citrus of some sort. We've got pears nearly ready. We've got another walnut tree. Ah, too many walnut trees. Not fair. And somebody mentioned to me actually i went to the cafe and had a coffee without paul even noticing while he was doing the photography and um the man was telling me that there's an enormous peach tree somewhere look at the look. pears come on everyone likes there's several pear trees on the yeah there. oops gosh i'm falling over pear different type of pear enormous citrus of some sort Pear behind you, another orange. Yeah, you've got loads of fruit. Ah, oh, a sickly looking plum tree with one little plum. One big plum saying, eat me. Oh, can I go down? One plum about to drop. Do I pick it? Yeah. Oh, it doesn't feel quite ripe no, though. No, Is it going to take me down a little... Alice Wishing Land, Wonderland. What's these? What are these? Okay, I think they're plums as well. Right, so I'll come. Oh, I found a doorway actually. Are those peaches? I don't know. I have, I am now stepping into Alice's. Well, yeah, possibly. I might go straight through it as well and just disappear. Floor's gone. I don't know what these are. They're not quite ready. Do you know what? They're not far off. I actually don't know what it is. It could be a nectarine. So now Paul's going to take you down into the stone building, which is at the bottom of the land, and down some rather steep steps. And when you get down there, you'll find that it's got an amazing height. So we, we're swapping height levels quite severely. So having come down the steps, we are into the main building. And on the right here, that's the door I was looking through where the unknown fruit is. But it was quite tasty. And so this is all stone. Except at the top, you see, the roof has obviously been changed at some point. And if Paul was to turn around that way, you would see that the height of the stone goes all the way up on the wall that's behind us. And there's a doorway into the other side of the building. There is also, if you continue around to your left, 
you can see that is an old doorway that has been blocked up because obviously the part here where Paul's looking through right now and then going into now has been added on at a later date. You've got double gates, which is your vehicle access. And then you've got, the, I mean, these rooms are really large. And that's a really, really not straight floor. But this is definitely, there's the whole channel along there. So that would have been for the horse feed or whatever feed you wanted, whatever animal was in here. Obviously this is prime for conversion to a second habitation if you were, you were allowed the permission to do so. so. I imagine you would be. I mean, this would make an, a lovely separate accommodation. It's huge, really good height. So in summary, a rare opportunity for such, uh, and I, I don't know how old it is actually, there's no plaques that I've seen, but it's clearly an old manor house. It would have been, it was at high quality. It has big land, flat-ish, stunning views, plenty of room for animals or for agriculture, plenty of character. It is a project if you want to turn it both floors into habitation, but then you'd have an absolutely beautiful house. Although it sits on the road at the front, it's not a busy road. It's the hub of the community. And at the back, it's completely private and you have these stunning, stunning views. We've chosen the orange, it's too hard to choose which part of the house to do the summary in. So we've chosen the orange tree. And we have, what did you say? It's west facing, no, east facing. So the land is east facing, north, east, south, west. Okay. So the front of the house is looking to the west. Here, all around, the land comes this way. So oh, it's a fantastic opportunity. You can buy more land going that way if you want to. And it's a project, there's no getting away from it. But for the value, for the price that you've got it at, then it really is a superb opportunity for somebody so i hope you enjoyed the video possibly we're going to get bombarded with questions please recall i haven't yet got it on the site okay so we've done the photography we'll do our best it might be monday before it actually goes live and um this is just a taster for you i hope you've liked it please do like and subscribe see you next time